Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland, this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I am intending to make more of these recordings more regularly. It seems to be what well, I seem to be a bit sporadic at times. So some weeks I do. I don't know, maybe three or four or three at least, like, and then another week I don't do anything, so I'm going to try and do them a bit more regular. As this is one of my most popular podcasts based on the daily stats. So thank you for listening and uh, this recording, I was thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to imagine something so I want you to I want you to think about it but I want you to I'm trying to how to word this there's something that well let's say if there's something in your life that when you think about doing it is anxiety arises uh, or a sense of panic arises it could be something you would class as a phobia it could be something that you class as anxiety provoking and this could be literally anything yeah, you know, it's not something that I can predict because it's your life and it's your your experiences. But I can give an example. So let's say uh, it could be I'm trying to think of something. I don't standing up and talking in a a work meeting or going to an interview of some kind maybe for a job maybe for a benefits interview it could be sitting on a bus sitting on a train So, when I said phobias, I'm not necessarily uh, wanting to focus on spiders or, you know, things like that, because although when it comes to anxiety provoking, someone with pretty much a phobia of anything is... um, extremely painful for them but most and I'm being generalizationally here but most phobias wouldn't I hope wouldn't get in the way of a person living their life hopefully so I'm not focusing on that necessarily. But focusing on something that you actually do in your life or you wish you could do in your life but you've felt that you've been held back 
or prevented from doing such things due to your emotional response in the past. So that's what this recording is for. It's going to be kind of, I suppose, a technique. But what we're going to do is, I want you to think about doing that activity. Whatever it is. Just what that situation would be. But what you're going to do is you're going to stand or you're going to sit on this side of the glass. And it's a bulletproof glass, the thickest, most indestructible glass ever. Which is going to divide you from the other room. But in the other room is you, the other you that's going to be doing this thing. So you can in no way be affected emotionally, uh, physically, mentally or any way because this thick protective glass, even a missile wouldn't get through it. So it's protecting you. So you're going to sit there in this room with me watching yourself doing this activity. So whatever it might be, but that you is going to be doing it easily. that you that you're watching is going to be doing it confidently that you that you're going to watch doing this thing this whatever it is you'll be doing it just naturally no big deal it's just the most natural thing in the world to that you behind the glass the other side of the glass and you're all sitting here with me completely protected from everything and you can just observe knowing that you're safe so even if it was a phobia and it involved a spider or something you could watch a spider and it wouldn't affect you at all because you know that you're safe. Even safer than you would be if you was at a zoo with a tiger or a lion on the other side of the glass. Can't get to you. Can't affect you at all. In fact, it's almost like watching a big screen television. You may as well not even be there. Apart from with zoos, you've got the extra smell, which is nice, and the expensive ice creams. And before you do anything, I just want to what, just notice yourself. Notice how you look. How you look when you feel confident. How you look when you feel relaxed. How you look when you look like you literally don't have a care in the world. You look really comfortable. At ease. And ready to deal with whatever life presents to you that's how you look that you on the other side of the glass and as you watch on this side you know that that you on the other side could do literally anything 
and it wouldn't affect you on this side of the glass it wouldn't affect you at all not emotionally or anyway you could even see an event that happened in the past that was quite awful maybe or that was you know difficult to deal with maybe left uh, potentially PTSD or something like that really left a, a, a traumatic result but you could watch that from behind the glass and you feel removed from it in such a way that doesn't have the effect that you would think it would have and then you change how you feel about it it almost like the things happening what well happened but the emotion connected to it that traumatic emotion which may have been holding you back since that event is almost just gone it's almost like that glass partition that window that glass that you're sitting behind has just come down and severed that emotional connection to that event so that you can no longer be affected by it so that you can no longer be limited by it doesn't change the past but it sure as well can change your future and it can change how you feel right now because that feeling almost just disappeared and it doesn't it doesn't feel real why would it just disappear why would it just disappear so easily And the logic brain, the logical part of our brain, because you're intelligent and you, there's, your brain can think, well, it's illogical for something that's been troubling you for a long time, maybe, and affecting your life negatively, and your decisions, and, you know, your choices in life have been affected by this to suddenly almost instantly transform that feeling from being painful to just not being anything it's like you know cardboard wet cardboard or wet paper try and write on wet paper it's, it's impossible yeah when it's dry you can do so much with paper origami if you're that way inclined you can do artwork, you can paint pictures, you can paint on it, write on it, make 
paper airplanes, whatever you want with paper. As soon as it's wet, it's just mush. Can't do nothing with it. The only thing you can do with wet paper really is maybe chuck it up at the ceiling and watch it stick. Uh, that's, I mean, it's fun the first couple of times, especially if you're about eight years old. So that's kind of similar what happens with those feelings. And the strange thing about it is you don't necessarily have to go through the process of watching those old memories reenacting themselves through the glass. It's like that you that's in the other room behind the glass that you're watching, that you holds all of those troubled memories, all of those issues that may have been causing anxiety and stress in the past, in the, even in the present, from stuff that's happened in the past whether it's PTSD, whether it's whatever the issue is, and it could be multiple. That you there and that connection between you on this side of the glass and that you on the other side of the glass, the only thing connecting you was those emotions, those connected feelings towards the old trauma, the things that induced anxiety and stress, panic and all that stuff. But as soon as the glass came down, it severed those connections, cut them, destroyed them. literally just like an electric wire if you cut a wire on a plug nothing you do is going to make it work put a new plug on put a new wire on but that's it you know until you do that it's not going to work if you've got a hose pipe and you want to water the garden you have to attach the hose pipe to the tap just holding one end of the hose pipe and just turning the tap on isn't enough it has to be attached and as soon as it gets unattached which in my memory with hose pipes they used to do that the water stops coming because it's disconnected And it changes how you feel. Changes how you feel. Changes how you experience yourself. Changes how you think about the future changes how you think about the present. Because those connections are, have, they're broken. So the past has happened. And the thing about spending time looking at the past 
is the equivalent to walking backwards. You're going to keep banging into things. You need to look into the future. You need to look where you're going, basically. Isn't that one of the first things we get taught when we're young? Watch where you're going. Especially when you're little and you're banging into people. I still bang into people, but it's partly on purpose. And as you are walking down the street, of course it, you need to see where you are now. Where you were, not really that interested, you know. That's behind you. But where you are now is, you know, it's good to be aware of where you are now. But where you want to go, where you're planning to go, that's kind of where you're focusing. If you're traveling, if you're driving in a car, you're not focusing on where you've been, you're focusing on where you're going. You're aware of where you are now, but that's not your focus because where you are now continuously changes. And where you end up depends on where you want to go, what you focus on. And which direction you're focused in. So basically, which are, wherever you're pointing and you travel in that direction, that's where you're going to end up. Although it's the most obvious sentence that anyone's ever said ever. It's true. If you just stand outside in a big massive park or a golf course or something huge like that, whichever direction you face and you keep walking, that's where you're going to end up. Unless you walk all the way around the world and perhaps you'd end up in exactly the same spot. But uh, I've yet found a way to walk on water. And that would be a bit extreme anyway. You know, for the sake of what we're doing here. You don't have to travel the world to do it. Unless you want to. Imagine if you're driving. Yes, another driving analogy. If you were driving, how far would you get if you spent the whole time looking in your rear view mirror? How far would you get before you crashed? You gotta look there. You know, just to see what's behind you. But if that's all you did, is just look in the rear view mirror, you wouldn't see what was in front. And inevitably would crash. So you need to look ahead. That's why the windscreen is made of glass. And it's so big. So you can see what's ahead because that's the important thing and it's disconnected from the rear view mirror the rear view mirror is tiny little tiny little mirror the windscreen is big rear view mirror tiny tiny little thing windscreen to the future is big so as you look through that glass seeing yourself sitting there or standing there whatever do you realise that 
he looked different, he looked relaxed. He didn't realize why before you looked relaxed. It's because of that severed connection caused by the glass. moving down from the sky onto the floor, severing that connection to those difficult issues from the past. So they no longer, and they no longer have the ability to affect you the way they used to. But what else has happened is that you behind the glass, you know, the other side of the glass, is full of positivity. And at the moment, you might have a little bit of that feeling, especially the relief of not no longer needing to deal with those, some of those emotions that were connected from the past. But as you look at yourself through that glass, that confident you, that you look happy. There's a positivity, there's a look in your eye, an expression on your face that says something to you, something some kind of knowing that things are going to be really good in the future. It's almost like you want to talk to this person. If it wasn't you that you're looking at, if that was someone that you'd never met before, you'd, you'd probably want to talk to them if someone asks you well, what kind of person is that you you say it's, that's a positive person that's a happy person that's someone that's relaxed and calm and can deal with anything that life presents that's that's a person that's got a future that can enjoy their future and plan it and have a great time. That's somebody worth knowing. That person is somebody worth loving. And as you get that in your mind, really grip your mind around that idea that person behind that glass is someone really special, really wonderful, kind, loving, positive, relaxed and calm, able to deal with whatever life presents. And as you keep hold of that idea in your mind, that idea becomes larger and stronger. The feeling of positivity becomes stronger. And as those feelings, those really nice feelings grow, you see the glass starting to raise up into the sky and that you that was behind the glass just turns into energy like a ball of energy a colour that's really attractive to you maybe you can hear a sound but that energy of positivity and healing And as I count down, I 
it to one, count from five to one, that healing energy of positivity is going to shoot right into your chest, filling your body up with all those new learnings, transforming how you think and feel. Five, four, three, two, one, now. Whoosh. Just let it fill you up. Fill your whole body and mind with those feelings of positivity and love and healing. That's right. Keep it going. And just relax into that feeling and allow it to do its work. And over the next few hours, the next few days, Notice the changes that have occurred. And please let me know how you get on. And you can sit with this feeling or lay down with this feeling for as long as you choose. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and move on with the rest of your day. Or you can just fall asleep, whatever you choose to do. And I shall speak to you next time. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.